Kitchener marks the end of the line for the Grand Prix season. Canada's one-time world medalist Jessica Dubay and Bryce Davison looked to top reigning world champions Aljona Sevchenko and Robin Zolkovi for a second time this season. While world silver medalist Joanne Rochette needs to impress and Japan's Grand Prix winner Akiko Suzuki looks for another spectacular performance here. Kitchener is one of the hotbeds of figure skating in this country. It's been a longtime supporter of this Grand Prix stop, and this will be the fourth time the KW area has hosted the best skaters in the world and home sets Skate Canada International. Well, Championship Figure Skating on CBC presented by Artistry is back, and I'm back, Brenda Irving, along with Kurt Browning, Tracy Wilson. We have two hours of coverage this afternoon. We have the women's and the pairs competitions, the short programs, and you know, for some of the top Canadians in these events, it could mean a good performance here, a trip to the Grand Prix Final in Tokyo in December. One of those teams, Jessica DeBay and Bryce Davison. Well, they have a great shot at getting to the Grand Prix Final in light of their second place finish at the Grand Prix of France, where they overtook the defending world champions. They need to step it up again here. And what's so interesting about Jessica and Bryce is last year at the World Championships, I thought it was over for them. They just looked like they were not gaining or, or improving a lot. In the off season, they got together and really worked on their relationship. They were able to put the tension behind them, have a wonderful chemistry now between them, and they have looked on fire in practice here. First or second, they guarantee themselves a spot to the Grand Prix Final. Well, Ayuna Sevchenko, Robin Zokovi, the two-time world champions for them after their first Grand Prix event, it was back to the drawing board. Yeah, my turn. All right, back to the... They should get a new drawing board to go back to. They're two-time world champions. They looked absolutely awful in their first program, like there was absolutely nothing that they could talk about. I think they both forgot German. So this is the event where we really are going to see the, Olymp the world champions come back or falter, and it's really important for them to not miss the Grand Prix final. Maria Mahortova, Maxime Trankov from Russia, they won the very first Grand Prix event of the season, of their season anyway. They should have a relatively smooth ride, one would think, to the Grand Prix it's final. easy after. Well, yeah. One would think, except they're known for being inconsistent. I ran into Maria at the hotel before coming here, and I said, congratulations on your win. She said, oh, that, I've forgotten all about it. We just want to prove that wasn't a fluke. If they can do that, they move ahead. You know, some people would say, hey, it's just the short program, only worth about 30% of the mark, but yeah. you don't want to get behind the eight ball, do you? Well, on paper, it's worth 30%, but mentally, it's worth more. And especially if you don't skate well, you take yourself out of the competition. And all that work and all that effort to, to not get to be even a player in the final, I know what that feels like. I've done it to myself in big events, and, and these skaters don't want to do that to themselves here. When you did it in your event it. at yep. the Olympic Games, you totally took yourself out. But in those days, and not that long ago, I might add, the rules were different because if you were down in the short, you had no chance in the free program. Right, you had to with be the top new three. system, you can, with a great skate, get back in the game, but it is very difficult. So, important, start off strong in the short. Yep. Annabelle Langua, Cody Hay, uh, former Canadian champions, they're here, one of the other Canadians at Home Sense Skate Canada International. They were off all of last season because of an injury. They're back and they're with our Karen Larson. Thank you very much, Brenda, Animal, and Cody. Your return to Grand Prix competition starts here. Are you feeling more anxious or more excited about it? I think definitely more excited. It's, I, I said to Annabelle, it, it doesn't feel like a different experience. It just feels all new again. We've been away from it for so long that um, all these things that, that we get to do and, and seeing all the competitors and getting to do all this media stuff even and, and with the crowd there, it's all just brand new. Annabelle, how confident are you feeling about your ankle? The injury was one that no athlete wants to go to through. It just seemed to go on and on and on for you. So is that completely behind you? And when a pair goes through something like that, does it change you somehow? Um, it, uh, well, to start, 
Yes, it, I, it's 100% healthy. I haven't had to worry about it since my second surgery, since they took everything out of there. Um, as soon as I walked on it, I knew it was better. As soon as we did throws, I knew it was solid, and it hasn't caused me any problems since. Um, it took a long time. Um, but with that said, it really changed the dynamic of both of us, and um, especially of me. I was never a nervous person competing or anything, and since uh, our return now after this injury, I've really been a nervous wreck and I hate it. <laughs> um, Cody used to get the nerves and now I'm the one who's really feeling it and he really takes charge and takes uh, more control than he used to because of that. How are you going to handle it when you step out there for the first time? Um, we've, I've been doing a good job handling it. I have uh, an amazing coach, an amazing partner and we have a great sports psychologist who works with us. Um, you know, Debbie Wilkes said years ago about Cody that it's all about getting the butterflies to fly information. Um, so that's what I've been training. <laughs> Good luck to both of you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. And the former Canadian champions are in our final flight along with the current Canadian champions, Dubay and Davison. The Korteva Trankov uh, follow the Canadians while the two-time world champions will skate last. This is Annabelle and Cody's first Grand Prix event in two very long years. They did compete in a B-level event in September where they looked Grand Prix ready. And also in anticipation of skating here in Kitchener at the Odd, they've come a couple of times each week to train on this ice, but nothing, Kurt, gets you ready for competition like competing oh, there's no other way to get ready to compete that's just by competing 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 and the five-minute warm-up is sometimes the hardest part and if that's true then the hardest part is over they had a terrible five-minute warm-up the jitters are probably there sometimes when the music starts you get back into your trend the heart calms down and you actually skate better let's hope that happens here well if anything can relax them and get them in the free-flowing mood it's this piece of music skating to fascination walls nice. and they will open with their side-by-side -side triple jumps oh my goodness <laughs> talk about doing it when it counts so low in the knee annabelle but good she pulled it out Two-foot landing, but I don't think they'll mind. That is the first one that they've landed today at the building. Getting stuck together. His blade got stuck together and really unfortunate that it was in an entrance to a required element. Still able to pull out the death spiral. Quick thinking on their part. She used to concentrate way too much on the jump. She said going through this injury, being away from skating has really showed her how much she missed the sport. Winding down their performance, Annabelle is absolutely beaming.
after that, and so is Cody. After the atrocious warm-up that did nothing to calm their nerves, they were able to get right into the performance, fight through any jitters, fight for the landing. Good step back to the competition arena. Well, they're trying to find a way to get to Vancouver and the 2010 Olympic Games, and they need to have a great performance here in Kitchener this week. Their marks are next. Well, we're waiting now for the marks for Annabelle Langwall and Cody Hay. A great return to competition for the Canadians. Watch Annabelle really low in the knee, and she'll use that a bit of a two foot. That's not the best that they can do, but they'll take it today. Absolutely amazing recovery from that warm up. Here's the look at their throw triple lutz, and just a tad touch down there with the free foot. But again, it's all relative, and. Uh, Boy, were they well, ever to take ever able to take it up a notch, Kurt? They were trying to get ready for this event last year, couldn't. A whole year goes by. They said it was like time warp to be here now. And this, the nerves must have been really extreme with the Olympics so close. They needed this badly and everything went wrong. It could have given up and they didn't, even when they're their hooks on their boots got stuck together, if I'm right. Uh, and uh, and they, they were able to fight that off and still maintain the death spiral. Very cool stuff. I know it's difficult to compare marks from competition to competition, but at Nebelhorn, uh, that event they attended in September, their score for the short program was around 57 and a half points. Well, they'll be hoping to take that up here into the 60s would be huge for them. Well, there was a lot of little things going on and a lack of speed. I thought the footwork was quite simple. Um, and then, of course, there was the, the hooks that got stuck together. You could probably go back their whole careers and ask them, has that ever happened before? And they might look at each other and go, nope. I thought we'd wait till Skate Canada never hooks get stuck together. <laughs> It'll probably never happen again. You probably have to not. Be in the warm-up when they were doing the side-by-side uh, -side triple toes, Annabelle was stopping midair and coming out forward with a start. Yeah. So that's that's how precarious It's a good way to lose your front teeth. <laughs> Well, we've been waiting some time now for the marks. One would assume uh, the judges are going over the video replay of, of one of their elements. The triple twist comes to mind. She, she landed on his shoulder, so not a clean exit to that element. So nice a slight deduction there. To Let's catch her even above your shoulders, nice and clean. Like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like I've never caught a girl above my shoulders. Let's have a look. Well, they Very good. will move into first place with a score of 55.524. The former Canadian champions, Annabelle Langua and Cody Hay. Well done. Avengers representing Canada, Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison. Well, Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison getting their marching orders there from, from their coach, Annie Barabe. And Kurt and Tracy, they need to finish first or second to guarantee them another trip to the Grand Prix final. They missed making it to that prestigious event last year. Their 2008-2009 season did not go exactly according to plan. That's what sports do to you make a new plan and that's what they have here skating to requiem for a dream <laughs> Triple twist, one of their newer elements. Important that she rotates above his head. Not bad. Sao Cow, five minute warm up. This was perfect. Oh, she she singled. singled hers.
last season was a huge disappointment for them. They were seventh at Worlds, no Grand Prix wins, didn't qualify for the final. They started out the season finishing second overall at the Grand Prix of France. Well, this program has a lot of intensity. It's matched by Jessica's face. I love her intensity this season. They just had a big error, but that program is a great, intense program to watch throw triple loop here. She's gonna have to fight for it, and she did. At this point, I'm feeling the intensity of the music overtake their performance. They have to keep their energy up. Can't start thinking about what went wrong. I actually think the intensity of their performance is up. I think the footwork sequence didn't match the, the music, so I would beef that up. But the look on her face tells it all. She's thinking about that one moment where the triple sow got away from her. Well, they are the two-time Canadian champions, Jessica Dubay and Bryce Davison. Now, let's go backstage to Karen Larson. Thank you, Brenda. Well, Annabelle, you talked about how nervous you would be stepping out onto the Skate Canada ice. Uh, your warm-up didn't go great, and yet when the music came on, you guys rose to the occasion. Um, well, that was the goal. I kind of had jello legs out there and I was really nervous, but um, I definitely wanted to be aggressive. I didn't want to just let it slip between our fingers. Cody, uh, you want to skate together as pair skaters, but at one point in the performance, there was a little bit too much togetherness. It looked like you were hooked on your, your skate hooks. What happened? Yeah, it was, it was weird, actually. That's never happened to us before, but just in the one move, Annabelle has her skate on top of mine and, and the hook from my pants got hooked on her laces and I just couldn't shake it off. It was uh, just a bizarre, fluky thing, but it happens sometimes. Great start, you too. Thanks Thank very you much. very much. Brenda? Well, we've just seen the performance of former world medalist Jessica DeBay and Bryce Davison of Canada. Here's their twist, and you can see how she comes down on his shoulder. The other pairs that you will see still to come complete row, uh, fully in the air. Very important. And here's a look at the side-by-side -side jumps, and she just got into it didn't rotate as a unit, popped it. And they lose about four, four and a half on that element alone. Next time, the the score is for Jessica well, the score they want to beat is the score of around 55 and a half points by Langua and Hay, but they really are looking to improve on their short program score from the Grand Prix of France, which was around 64 points. So nowhere near that with, with the mistakes, and uh, again, they, they let the performance get away from them at the end as well. We'll have more skating from Kitchener in just a moment. And Maxine Trankov. Russia's Marie Mohortova and Maxine Trankov won the very first Grand Prix event of their career earlier in the fall. That was the Grand Prix of France, and all they need here is to finish in the top four to make it through to the final in Tokyo in December. And they've already had a lot of success in this building. They won the world junior title here in 2005, the same competition where Jessica Dubay and Bryce Davison won the silver medal. Now, if you're here all week, watching them practice is interesting. There's not a lot of interaction between them. She won't look at him very much. She's uh, very secular. She uh, is a skater girl, wears three sweaters and pink fuzzy gloves to warm up and talks to her coach, but not him. 
and uh, and it's the con the, the uh, relationship between Dubé and Davison that is really coming up that I think is making them strong this year. And these two save it for the program, I guess. Oh, this is here. what they're great at. Sorry, That's Tracy. Right. Great height as she spins overhand in the air. Beautiful inside edge on this triple combination. Sorry, I said combination. I was thinking there'll be two jumps at once, but there was gorgeous triple toes. Their elements, so clean. Characteristic mistake on her throw triple loop, hands down. Last season, this was their money program, the short program. Twice they beat the world champions with it. But the free program, they, they did struggle. never seen in the Paris competition and now working their way through the footwork and Kurt this is such a fine team there are so many qualities to like but what separates them from the great teams is the lack of communication I it amazes me how they're able to practice and perform without ever looking at each other <laughs> intentionally <laughs> Well, they're a good-looking couple. Technically, there's nothing wrong, and I guess the human element just wants a little more from the sport of figure skating than just that, and uh, it's not there. But they're still amazing. They're great. Well, a Russian team has not missed winning the Olympic gold medal in Paris since 1960. This is one of two teams from Russia that is being pressured to keep that streak going. Now, let's once again head backstage to Karen Larson. Thank you very much, Brenda. Jessica and Bryce, I think we can fairly, fairly call that a little bit of a bumpy start to state ca Skate Canada, beginning with the triple sal cow, Jessica. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I don't really know what happened. I mean, it was good since we've been here, and I guess it's just a little miss uh, timing, and I'll do my best to do it in the long. But uh, unfortunately, uh, when the mistake happened after that, it was a little bit uh, sloppy, I guess, from there on. So. Hopefully it will be better tomorrow. Bryce, what will you focus up for for the free program? I'm um, just uh, refocus after this one, um, and tomorrow's another day, like we always say. And uh, hopefully we can just go out and do it like we've been doing it in training because it's been running really well. Thanks, you too. Thank Thanks, you. Brenda. Russia's Maria Makortova and Maxine Trankov uh, just performed their short program. Now we're waiting for their scores. And being part of a, a team, I used to love having somebody on the ice to talk to, to kind of relate to. It helped to settle me. Uh, technically, you can see the precision, the height, a uh, sensational twist. They get very highly scored. I love the entrance to these triple toes, that long inside edge, using the ice instead of skating straight down the middle of it. Very impressive. And here's a look at their throw. Usually Ooh. she just flies on the landing there, leaning forward, digs in with the toe. Too high today. Well, their short program score from the Grand Prix of France, which they won, was 66.88. And their score here, just a few points lower than that. 
But that is enough to put them into first place ahead of Dubay and Davison in second, Langwa and Hay in third place. Welcome back to Championship Figure Skating on CBC, presented by Artistry. And there's a look at Market Square in the heart of downtown Kitchener, about a five-minute drive from where we are at the Odd, as locals call it, or the Kitchener Auditorium. As we mentioned off the top of the show, it was back to the drawing board for the two-time world champions after their first Grand Prix event of the season. Uh, Savchenko and Zokovi finished a disappointing third behind Canadians Dubay and Davidson and the Russian pair we just saw, Muhortova and Trankov. Kurt and Tracy, the past month, they've created a completely new free program but have kept their same short program from the start of the season. Well, the short program wasn't the problem at the Grand Prix of France earlier. But Another wonderful performance. Yes, but still, what happens when you go back to the drawing board, you go through the stress of reinventing yourself in the free skate. All of the work into the choreography can take away from the short program and all of the training and your confidence. They got through this program. I love the music, the way they skated to it. I always respect what they try to do. They never play it safe choreographically, always bringing something new to the table. Kurt, today though, a little bit slow and cautious, but to be expected. Wow, the music, wow, so there was, usually I would complain and agree with you, but I felt the music almost forgave them for that. Um, and we're used to seeing such explosion from them. This was a softer side, but when you dress like that, and you put makeup on like that, you challenge everybody to make fun of you. 
And I think we were quiet off the top and they kept us quiet because I wanted to see what they were going to do with it. It was seamless. If the music was playing right here on this, you would see that she took off on a note and landed on a note and that blew me away. And I think it's what started the program on a very high quality path. Robin been struggling with his triple jumps in practice. A slow approach, careful, but clean. They did the rotation. Watch the spread eagles in here. Very difficult entry into that triple twist. Well, and she spins so beautifully. Her positions are exquisite. Haven't noticed. Um, I think <laughs> off the top, we did speak about the short program, keeping yourself in the game. So if they've had a big setback, and if you're two-time world champion, it's kind of okay to have something go off the track. Take a deep breath and then kind of build back because when you're always defending, 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 it gets tiring. So you know what? A big, huge crash early in the season might be okay for a team that's been two-time world champion and needs to try to push towards the Olympics. Now they have something to push for. It was a performance which had the crowd at the Kitchener Auditorium on their feet. Mm -hmm. They had a monster score at the Grand Prix of France in their short program. It was nearly 73 points. The highest score this year in the short program was Jen and Zhao, who have hit just over 74. I'd be surprised if they were and in that range. And with a little more fine tuning, for sure they're in striking distance of that. But important for them, as you say, Kurt, to keep in the game in this short program. And a reminder that uh, leading at the moment, Makortova and Trankov, their score almost 66 points. In the kiss and cry with their coach, Ingo Stoya, 1997 World Pairs champion. Oh. Wow, 74.16, so a season best. And their, uh, their element scores very, very high. Their levels, top quality, picking up a lot of marks for the quality of the elements. And then, of course, told a, tor uh, told a story with the program, bringing up the component scores. And that All is right. a new career personal best uh, for the Germans. So they, look at the lead they have, 74.16 six points over McCordova and Drankov and then we see around 58 points Dubay and Davidson in third place and Langua and Hay in fourth position. Well, the two-time world champions were too talkative prior to today's short program, but they're ready now to speak with our Karen Larson. Thanks very much, Brenda. Aliona and Robin, a, a career best score, standing ovation from the crowd, and a substantial lead on the competition. I'm guessing you're pretty satisfied with your short program. Um, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, everybody knows um, that we had a yeah, a few mistakes in our first Grand Prix in, in, in Paris and so we worked very hard the last four weeks and uh, so we came here a little bit nervous or kind of nervous and now yeah, all the pressure is gone for today and so we hope for tomorrow. Yes, all the pressure gone for today but you will be debuting a new free program. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, how apprehensive are you to make that change mid-season and how uh, can we anticipate that you're going to show this off for the first time? Um, well, it was, um, the decision was not easy for us um, to do it uh, in the middle of the season, but um, well, we tried the, the last yeah, three or four weeks, um, the new program, and uh, our feeling was yeah, much better in this program. The new costume, the, the new moves, elements, transitions, and all that, and um, well, but the rest we will see tomorrow. Good luck to you too. Thanks. Well, they'll have their work cut out for them tomorrow in the free skate, but they are the leaders after the short, the two-time world champions from Germany. And just around the corner, the women's short program.